degree of maturity are available. So what do we think this could be used for? This came out of the consultative group that Susan chaired and the Phoebe workshop. We see three main uses as a means of organisation or individuals benchmarking themselves, as guidance in terms of areas to look at, uh, and as a means of reflecting and comparing in a kind of longitudinal seeing where you're going to. We think the benefits are ability to help to guide users in understanding how to think about the key issues in this area. We think it's flexible enough to cover those four stakeholders, individuals, teachers, uh, organisational leaders and policy makers. And we think it's useful as a mechanism for institutions to self benchmark. So just to give you some uh, another view of this, uh, and in terms of uh, fleshing it out for the case studies, so I'll just pick out a couple of these. So at the individual level, the micro level, you might have in terms of strategy for policy, an individual who's got clear motivations and goals in terms of how they're using the OER. At the institutional level, you might have examples of where the institutional strategies and policies in place. For example, um, in the OU, we now have OER mainstreamed into our work. It's written into our learning and teaching strategy. It's clearly embedded. It's no longer seen as a separate funded initiative. And similarly, in terms of the national level, where you may have it uh, uh, embedded into national policy. Again, as I mentioned in the UK, uh, we've had a number of initiatives which have fallen through in terms of funding. Uh, Chris mentioned uh, SCORE, for example, and there have been a whole load of projects which have been funded by GISC and the HE Academy in terms of supporting this. Uh, picking out another example, you might have at the micro level, example of peer review and discussion in terms of skill development. Or at the, uh, at, the, at the macro level, for example, the Hewlett Foundation 